uh, this is a, about a recent, uh, mainly about a recent paper called uh, Plookup uh, that I wrote with uh, Zach Williamson uh, from Aztec. Uh, so, uh, sort of the the motivation for the our uh, Plookup work is that uh, snarks are easy prey for. Uh, in a world of, of nasty binary functions. And uh, what, what this means is that when you're writing some sort of program inside a snark, you need to express that program uh, in, in terms of native field operations, typically in a, in a large prime field. Uh, but say you're, you're looking at, a, at some function, some hash function, that has operations like uh, a bitwise XOR. So you have, uh, you're thinking of your inputs as uh, elements in this native field, uh, but you want to do a, a native XOR, uh, a bitwise XOR between them. Uh, you also want to check that they say, if it's eight bit string XOR, they really correspond to an eight bit string. Uh, and then you, that C is equal to the, the bitwise XOR of A and B uh, when you write the field element as uh, you, know, you represent it in bits. Uh, so sort of the, the standard way of, of doing this uh, is uh, to sort of put, you know, a lot of variables in your uh, constraint system and uh, one for representing each bit of A, B, and C and now do these uh, quadratic bitwise constraints. So, so this would cost you, say, 25 to 32 uh, R1CS constraints. Uh, and now uh, the problem with this uh, 25 to 32 is that it's, uh, it's not something you pay once, it's a multiplicative factor uh, so that you pay. Uh, so think of, you know, doing a, a SHA or Blake hash. So write the whole, if you look at the description, it's, it's right, the, every, every instruction sort of is, is one of these operations. So, so basically when you're, uh, if, if you try to write your, your hash function is like a sequence of eight bit operations, you're gonna pay this 30 factor for every operation uh, when you write it inside the, the snark. So uh, this has led to uh, one, one rich line of investigation in the last few years of of keeping snarks in uh, in friendly neighborhoods, uh, so uh, this is research on how how can we construct uh, good hash functions, uh, good ciphers, such that all the or almost all the operations are uh, native field operations. So so for example, this this in this line of research, we've got the uh, the MIMC, Poseidon, and res rescue uh, hash functions. Uh, right, and the idea is, okay, maybe we can, whenever we need a hash function or a, or a cipher, we'll use something in this uh, neighborhood. Uh, and what we, we try to do in, in, this, in this work, uh, and, and this is, uh, it's, it's, it's similar to a, a previous work uh, called ARIA uh, is, uh, let's say, no, we do want, right, especially, if, you know, for maybe argument's sake, right, if we want to snarks to get out of the playground and, uh, in a sense, be usable by, by everybody, IoT, you know, uh, you, you don't want to tell your consumer or your, you know, another engineer who's not aware of this world that, oh, no, no, you've got to, you can't use SHA or AES, you have to use this thing that we came up with. Uh, 
So uh, the idea is in, instead of expressing the, uh, the operations as, as, as constraints in your native field, which inevitably will be expensive when your field is prime and your operations are, are bitwise, uh, simply sort of pre-compute a, a lookup table. Uh, for example, a lookup table of all field elements triples A, B, C, uh, so that when you look at their bit representations, they're all 8-bit elements and C is equal to, to uh, the XOR of A and B. Um, and then the idea is that uh, maybe you can somehow just check that this tuple ABC is in your pre-computed table rather than expressing, actually expressing the XOR bitwise XOR logic uh, in, in your big prime field. And uh, the idea is that uh, you can sort of do this in a way that when you do enough of these lookups, uh, roughly the number of lookups should be as large as, as the table. That's when it starts to uh, pay off. When, when, you, when you do enough, then the sort of these lookup checks have an amortized, sort of an amortized constraint of, of, of one. Amortized cost of one constraint per per store instead of this uh, twenty five to thirty, say. Uh, so that is that is the that's the motivation of of plukup. And uh, let me give you a sort of an explanation of how this protocol works. So this is this is going to be a simplified protocol compared to that of the paper with with slightly uh, worse efficiency. So uh, the first thing I, I need to introduce you to this basic tool that we can call the multi-set check. What is the multi-set check? It's, uh, say I'm giving you two uh, like vectors of field elements and I ask, are they equal as multi-sets? Meaning that, uh, you know, up to some reordering, they contain the same elements also when, when counting uh, repetitions. Uh, and a, a simple idea that was used in, in previous works of, uh, I think, various works of Grot, uh, for example, this Bayer Grot work uh, that, that we uh, took inspiration from, is that a simple trick is that you can reduce this multi-set check into a, a sort of a single pro randomized product. And uh, so, so, so how do you do this? You, you choose some random gamma in your field. And now, so right, if, if I have, right, if the A's and B's, the A's and B's could be different, but their products could still be the same. Say if the A's are one, 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 and the B's are half, one, two. Uh, but uh, what's easy to see from the Schwartz epilemma is that if, if they're not the same multi-set, if you, if you choose some random gamma and now compare the products uh, shifted by this gamma, then uh, with very high probability, uh, they're, if, if they're different as multi-sets, uh, the products will be different. And uh, this, this core uh, contribution of, 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 the, of the Plonk paper is, uh, so, okay, how, how, all right, how, how can I actually, you know, do this inside a snark, this, this product check and, and the core con contribution of, of, of Planck is a really efficient and simple way to do. So say you have two commit, two polynomial commitments to two vectors, uh, the, you can do this, this product check very, very, very efficiently. Uh, okay, so, so let me try to give you a, a small explanation, a short explanation of, of how lookup works. Uh, so say, again, what our setting is sort of, we have some vector uh, that, of, that we think of as the witness. We have some other vector that we think of as uh, the table. And we wanna prove that F is contained in T, meaning that every value in 
just in the set, not multi-set sense, meaning that every value in, in F is, that appears in F also appears in uh, T. And just, you know, a, a tiny remark, right, that we were, we were talking about uh, top check tables of tuples, uh, but it's easy to go from the tuple case to the single element case by, by sort of random combinations. Right. Okay. Oops. All right, so let me give you again the, just a simple example of the of the simplified, less efficient version of the lookup protocol. So say, for example, our witness was 311 and our table was 134. So right, in this case, our claim is true, like the values of F are contained in the, in the values of T. And so how will we prove this? So uh, the prover will commit to a sorted version of F union T. And here I'm sort of switching between multi-sets and sets here in the, in the, in the multi-set set sense. So concretely, uh, if this is F and this is T, then S will be one, 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 three, three, four, right? That's the union of F and T sorted with all the repetitions. And now the prover will show that as a, as a multi-set, like S is indeed equal to F union T. So how will he do this exactly with this, this uh, multi-set check that, that I, I uh, mentioned? Uh, all right, so now we know that S is, they're, they're equal as, as multi-sets, right? But that doesn't tell us so far that the values of F are contained in T, right? It doesn't say that at all. So uh, the next step is to look at the difference multiset of S. So, right, so we just look at each two consecutive elements and look at their, their difference. So, right, if this, for example, it will be S, so this will be, right, one minus one is zero, one minus one again is zero, three minus one is two, we'll get zero, zero, two, zero, one. And similarly, we'll look at the difference multiset of our table. So if the table is one, three, four, uh, it will be two, one. Uh, right, so, so what we see is, right, that whatever there's a repetition, uh, we just get zero. And since both S and T are sorted, when uh, when it's in U, when we're switching element, then the, the difference in S and T should be the same difference. So, so what, what follows is that uh, the claim is true if and only if uh, is multisets S prime is equal to T prime union uh, as many zeros as like the size of uh, S minus the, the size of T. Uh, so that's maybe a little to digest. Uh, I'll just, so how does this compare to the, to the paper? So basically, right, we, if our basic unit of cost is this multi-set check, right, we did here two multi-set checks uh, between S and F union T and then between the, the different sets. And uh, what, what we show in the paper is if you look at uh, what randomized different sets, you can actually combine these two checks into into one multi-set check. Um, okay, so uh, that was maybe a bit fast. I'd be happy to answer questions, uh, but I, I'd like to finish by uh, mentioning, so, uh, I'm really trying to get it easy to use the, the Plong proving system. So uh, you're welcome to go to this uh, URL and get a easy web interface for, for using Plunk. Plonk, let me, let me just show this to you for 15 seconds. If I'm not over time. 
Right, so, so this is sort of what it looks like. Uh, you can create a new proving system. You can uh, then put in uh, provers and verify. It's a little different from R1CS, but, but you have like, uh, for example, the basic you know, addition constraint, basic multiplication constraint. Uh, and yeah, and uh, so I encourage you to, to give this a shot. And uh, yeah, I'll end there. So thank you.